Hello, this is your friendly neighbor, Dr. Jimmy128, and I'm going to be bringing to you the third game between Cube Regilius and Cube Tantanix. This isn't exactly a best of whatever series. These were just some practice games played by two of my teammates, and I decided to cast them because I have not cast it in the longest while. So I did search my replay folder and found this game. And let's hope this is going to be another exciting game. Back in game two, we saw excellent excellent use of Nidus Rams from Tantanix absolutely pounding away on the economy of Rexelius until he tapped and that's one thing that uh, Xerix have been doing recently I mean my friend uh, I actually tapped to my friend who kept on harassing my mineral line with circlings well I actually was attacking it was on uh, the uh, caverns I was attacking his gold expansion and he just sent in like 32 zerglings that ate up my entire economy so yeah, Protoss, you better watch out for those counter attacks. So this is going to be on Typhon Peaks. And both players are spawning in, I'd say, relatively close positions. I'd call this close air. But it looks like the, 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 the travel distance from both bases are uh, rather equal. So uh, yeah, I mean, they're not cross positions. So, uh, Standard they coming in from Exilius, not seeing any cheese. As once again, he's not known for cheese. And Tantanix now going once again for a 15 hatch. Gonna follow it up probably with a 15 pool. He's not making any drones right now. He's saving up for that spawning pool, which come in 3, 2, 1. There goes a drone. Right on cue. Gateway coming up. Cybernetic score should be going down as soon as the minerals are there. There you go. Leaving a nice little uh, opening for a zealot to block. Probes now placed in gas. Very standard play. This is, these are the standard solid builds for Zerg and Protoss. A 15 hatch. Uh, not that. You're, that's not very greedy. You get good enough economy. Your spawning pool comes up uh, at a rather good time for you to make any Zerg links if there are any attacks on the way. You can also put down some spine crawlers and queens for defense. So 15 hatch. Great Zerg build. And the drone now coming in spots. The cybernetic score sees everything is as it should be. And no probes going in gas though yet. Uh, yet though, yes, no probes yet going in gas. Six Zerg is now spawning out. Huge, huge drone transfer here from Tantanix. Producing six links and uh, two queens. There go the probes in gas. And the probe now is just gonna... She gonna die! Yes, the probe dies. He wasn't able to escape with his life. His kids are gonna cry when they find out he's, he has perished. And it's like this one's locker though. He's gonna go out and try to do a little bit of harass. It might encounter these four Zer these five Zerglings. And Rexilia spots it. Uh, Rexilia though. I mean Gino doing the wise thing and backing out. Because right now the stalker is faster. And Zerglings, it has 2.95 movement speed. The links only have. Uh, oh, they actually have the same movement speed. They do? Okay. But Stalker's though very, very nimble and rather good against Zerglings, I mean. With, you know. In small numbers. A lot of Chrono Boost saved on Rigelius's Nexus. I wonder what he's gonna do with it. He can Chrono Boost his Warp Gate. Looks like he's gonna go into a 3 gate expand this game. He's gonna go straight up macro. Um, he figured mm, cheese has not worked in the past game, so he's gonna go macro. He cancels. I believe that was a gateway. He's gonna put down a Nexus. So there you go. There goes Nexus for Rigelius. And if Gino does spot this, a good choice for him, you know, good choice would be to expand because he, you know, oh, very, very standard Zerg play. You want to be a base head of your opponent if you want to keep up in the ma macro and economy. And uh, Gino does spot that. Will he react by putting down a hatchery? No, he gets Zergling speed. And Robotics facility now on the way for Exilius. Very, very standard. Uh, Protoss play 
getting his uh, robotics facility and he's actually getting there up front trying to make it a little bit trying to make a little wall up Virgins their fall to the little Protoss army which I like because um, this does minimize the set of the circling run by so you have to go around instead of going straight on in you have to go around so this gives you enough time to warp in a zealot get a force field or get some forces to block the circlings and we should be seeing the observer observer there oh no it's gonna be an immortal for Exilus however I am not seeing any roach warren though no roach warren up for uh, Gino and he is floating a lot of minerals he does have a lot of larva what is he gonna do with them he's gonna go ahead and go for lair tech grabbing a spore colony and which it uh, with the position of the spore colony it does work for him in two ways on one it'll spot any dark templar or any observer so I like the positioning right there now Gino is grabbing his uh, third base and just poking around with links here uh, what is he doing? Well, we actually we actually have a lot of links. So what are, are they gonna jump on the cliff? I don't know. They may do a run by, but let us find out. Lair is just about to finish, and we're now okay. So we now see a roach warren going down for Gino. And wow, I like this. He's actually using one link to distract the entire Protoss army and he's gonna run in into this very, very vulnerable Protoss base. We have, how many is this? 11 Dragonlings are going for the probe line. Regilius acting accordingly and trying to pull off as many drones as possible. Two drones go down, how? And do he get a third? Uh, no, he doesn't get a, He does get a No, the, the third. Uh, the third one survives. He can snipe off a couple of more probes here. But he's trying to go for the Nexus, which I doubt will happen. He's gonna try and pick up more probes. Here comes the third. Third probe goes down. And I don't know what is he gonna do. Is he gonna try and duke the Stalkers? Oh no, they run straight into the Stalkers and die. So, I believe, okay, four, three or four probe kills there from uh, Gino in exchange. Or 11 Zerglings. Actually, 12 because uh, this one Zergling that was used to distract the army must have died as well. So, another immortal, another immortal coming up, plus one attacks on the way. This will be very, very devastating on the immortal. This will go up to 55 damage versus armored. And we have 12 roaches just now spawning for Tantanic. So, we're gonna see a very, very macro intensive game. And we have a little wall of crawl action here. Uh, HD StarCraft reference. One of my favorite casters, one of the people who inspire me to do this. So, robotics facility on the way now for Achilles is just about to finish, and he's gonna for, gonna go for Colossus Tech. We may see some more gateways. I'd like to see a couple of additional gateways. He is floating a lot, and wow, we have 14 probes now coming. I mean drones coming out for Gino. So he's going heavy, heavy macro this game. Looks like we have some forces come going out. For Exilius, try and spot any possible threats, but by the looks of the base, Gino's base, he is definitely uh, gonna turtle up for a while. Plus one tax almost done, except for my lance being researched, and we have the first class on the way. I'm not seeing any additional gateways though. Um, it's like Exilius is going straight for these colossi. Which I actually agree because he cannot support five, uh, six gateways and one robotics on two base. Unless he goes goes ahead and grab his third cross stack would be very very delayed if he go for six gate. So very smart. Here's uh, something uh, that I just learned by watching this game. And are we seeing any other upgrades? No, no. Target counts are going down. Same Colossus on the way. Looking at the income tab, uh, wow, it's rather, it's relatively even. However, Gino does is saturating three bases. Regilius hasn't grabbed his third. And one of the very interesting things about these spawn locations, the uh, naturals are very, very close. Uh, they're just like a screen away, and you can take out these structural rocks for easy access. 
And looking at the food count, Regilius is not that far behind. Looks like we have a Spire now coming up for Gino. He might want to, I don't know, looks like we have a third hatchery. I don't know what he's gonna do with this Spire. Mulus or maybe possibly Broodlords. And it looks like we have a third ex a third base now going down for Regilius. Um, this does has its, have its pros and cons. Number one, it is very far. I mean, it's really way out of the way, you know, for the uh, warpath. It's way out of the warpath, the path of ba direct path of battle. So unless um, Gina spots this, this expansion will pay huge dividends. So it looks like Rexilius now is gonna prepare for an attack. He is at 139 to over 156 and looks like he's gonna go ahead and attack the destructible rocks. Gino does see this, he is moving his army in position to intercept and oh this queen is going to die and Gino is now forced to pull off all his probes drones off the line and this will, the expansion may go down where are the roaches? the roaches are trying to swing around don't make that the zerglings but the expansion does go down for Regilius I mean for Gino so Regilius they're just wanting to snipe that expansion and he used uh, the terrain pretty well. Uh, he could have easily force fielded. Did he have, did he have sentries? Yeah, he could have easily force fielded the Roach army. So that that is also one of the reasons why Gina did not attack because he can just be force fielded. And that hatchery would have gone down anyway. So we have three Colossus now out for Exilius. This is a huge number of Colossus. Fourth one could be very deadly. And oh yes, of course, how could I forget? He got the Spire for the Corruptors. I am so, so sorry. He got the Spire for the Corruptors to counter the Colossi. Like now Sprota shields being upgraded. Interesting upgrade and you have a lot of gateways now on the way. Three gateways now being put down. Fire Council and another forge. And Regilius hasn't, hasn't exaggerated, exactly exaggerated. Ex exaggerated? Saturated his third. And he's uh, trying to catch these Zerglings. But these Zerglings could come. Uh, could be very big later on because they can do a little pincer attack here if Regilius decides to engage but Regilius wisely pulling back gonna wait for 300 as his gateways are about to finish he now has four colossus wow and a bunch of immortals these will take care of the roaches no problem these immortals can one shot the roaches and here come the gateways this should bring Regilius to 200 Plus two missiles now coming up for Riggs, uh, for Gino and this one for doing nothing, being lazy. Here come the additional gateways. And oh, are these Zerglings? These Zerglings are gonna spot this bottom expansion, though there are a lot of cannons. The Zerglings spot the expansion and are attacking this. Are attacking, duh, but the cannons are there to defend. It's like uh, Regilius tries to warp in a more zealous to defend his expansion. And he should be able to hold. And uh oh, looks like he is now gonna move in for the kill. He is at 144, 194 over 168. Gina lost a lot of units, and he's desperately producing now 15 roaches. He's gonna shoot up to 200. However, this isn't exactly the 200, 200, the 300 situation that any sex would have been. Here comes a huge attack. The wall of growth is under siege, and these roaches can be easily force it in half. And here come the crafters coming from behind. They're gonna take out every single colossus. But the Immortals are eating away at the Roaches. The army has been cut in half. And all the Colossus are gonna go down. However, the Immortals here proving to be very, very effective. Though they don't have that many kills. Regilius is at 1-1-1-1-1. One, 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 one. He has a lot of sentries. He does have the Guardian Shield and he's moving in now. These Corruptors are basically useless. And these Roaches are only has to defend trying to use Corruption on the units. But it might not be enough. The Roaches are clumped up here behind. They cannot attack. And these Protoss here continue to... Deal a lot of damage and oh no, Jin is being forced to pull the drones off the line to try and defend but looks like there's gonna be, there's too much, there's too much, <laughs> here comes some reinforcing stalkers coming from G from Rexilius and the roaches are going to go down, 10 roaches in production but it won't be enough, all the morals go down though but the damage has been dealt, all the stalkers can take out the roaches no problem. And Tantanix GG's and Rexilius takes a game playing Super Ultra Macro Protoss. And that was an excellent game. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that. Very fun conclusion to this uh, little three match series. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And this is your friendly neighbor Dr. Jimmy signing off. Bye bye.